for providing for us. Thank you, Jesus. For forgiving us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the pain that you suffered to free us from bondage. We pray, Lord God, that you will help us live for you in such a way that will bring you glory. You have uh, given us so many promises. Thank you, Jesus. Many of us don't even know what they are. Mm -hmm. But you have blessed us and brought us to you. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. <coughs> it's good to see you. Amen. I, I, I want to ask you guys a question. Not one that I, I want you to answer, not to me, but just to yourself. Oh, how powerful he can be. 
in me and nobody. Today, when we look at the church on Sunday, we look at how many thousands of people have come to this building to worship, and we think they have it. But many of them don't, because God doesn't work with large numbers. He works with nobodies. Mm, amen. And the nobodies he works with, he builds for his purpose. Amen. That's why the Bible says that many are too called but few are chosen. But I want you to know that this small group is the kind of group God chooses. Amen. And you have no reason to feel that you are less <laughs> or God has forgotten you. No. Amen. He uses you. Thank you, Lord. Because we have Amen. no power. Amen. Amen. And when we have no power, we rely on His power. Amen. Right with 
Yes, yes. So when you read this book, mm. you don't apply what the Jews did mm. to you. You look at the New Testament, yes. what Jesus says, yes, because he completes the purpose of the old. Yes. So with that in mind, I want to talk about the Ephesians, which is an epistle. And what's important about the epistle, the epistle is that it helps us to see how God corrects the, 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 the wrong teachings mm. of people who follow him. Mm. Okay? Every one of the epistles was written to correct misunderstanding mm. or wrong teachings about what Christians all about. Not Jews, what Christians are about. Amen. That's why when you open it up and it, it tells you who's written to. It normally says to the church or to those people who have been called out in Ephesus or Corinthians or Romans. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I want to share with you the book of uh, Ephesians. And I just want to read a, 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 a few verses. So, okay. Uh, here's this. What's that? What's that? Chapter 4. In fact, I'm going to start reading at verse 4. But I ain't going to read it. <laughs> it says, um, there is one body yes. and one spirit. Yes. Even as you mm. are called, yes. you notice that, are called yes. in one hope yes. of your calling. Yes. Let me tell you what hope means. Hope is not a wish. Mm -hmm. It's not a, I want something to happen that I just wish it would. No, hope is the response to a promise that God made. Amen. Hope is an expectation yes. of something to happen yes. because God said that it will. Yes. 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 And it goes on to say there is one faith, one faith, one baptism, mm. one God and one. Father of us all, yes. who is above all and through all yes. and in you all. Yes. Let me stop. You might read that, and they might tell you that God is in me. Mm. Well, he is if you fit what this is talking to whom it's talking to. Remember, it's talking to those who are called out. Mm -hmm. It's talking to those who are Christians. Amen. It's not talking to people who don't believe. Amen. So when it says God is in you, it's talking to the church. Amen. It's talking to me. It's talking to you individually. Mm. That the Spirit of God lives in you. Amen. Okay. Now I want to look at verse 11. Same chapter. And he, that's God, gave some apostles mm. and some prophets mm. and some evangelists mm. and some pastors and teachers. Amen. Now, if you want to know, well, the question would be, well, why did God do that? It says in verse 12, for the perfecting mm. of the saints, or the preparation of believers. Amen. For the preparation of believers, for the, the, the perfection of saints, for the work mm. of ministry. Amen. That's the job of the church. Amen. The work of ministry for edifying or building up mm -hmm. the body yes. which we are. Yes. So I want you to see that God, what he does, you don't see it until we study and get connected to him, mm -hmm. has already prepared us for what he wants us to do. Amen. 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 Amen.
Now, you might say, well, how do I do it? If, if God called me to, to, to be a minister or, or actually what worship is, is service to God. Amen. When we talk about worship service, I don't know what that is. But worship is service to God. Amen. And it ain't on Sunday. Amen. It's on Monday, Tuesday, yes. Wednesday, yes. Thursday, yes. Friday. Yes. You got it? Yes. It's God in you saving and forgiving other people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But for that to get done, we have to be taught. Yes. Therefore, God gives us gifts. And the gifts are people. Yes. He gave apostles. He gave prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Amen. Now let me tell you something. Some of these people are not with us today. You know, the, uh, if you look at for example, the prophets. When they hear somebody say, I'm a prophet, he's a liar. <laughs> because the prophets had the authority of God directly. Yeah. And they spoke God's word with the authority that comes from God. Oh, and on top of that, the prophets not only spoke with the authority of God, they weren't speaking to you or me. They were speaking to Israel, Syria, Egypt, Ethiopia. God was talking to countries. And he was also promising what was going to happen in the future through his prophets. And <clears throat> I will tell you <clears throat> that we don't they're not with us anymore. They're not. If you look at Hebrews chapter 1, it'll tell us why they're not with us. So let me go to that right fast. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God, who at sundry times and at diverse manners spoke in past time unto the fathers by the prophets. Huh. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and by whom also. He made the worlds. The prophets aren't with us. Okay, so you say, well, why do we even worry about the prophets? Well, the Romans tells us that the things that were written in the past, and those were written by the prophets, were written for our learning. Right? So that through the patience of the scriptures, we might have hope. Let me break that down in our English. It says that it was written, the Old Testament, the prophets were written that we might learn. Learn what? How God deals with everybody. It wasn't written to us, but we learned from it. You understand? Okay. And so that is the thing that gives us hope. We know what to expect from God. That's the whole point. What is that Jesus is the hope of glory? He is our expectation of what God will look like when he shows up. So he gives us prophets. And the prophets help us to understand what God wants us to do. He also gives us apostles. But guess what? Those guys aren't with us either. The last one died when 
John gave us up, he's the only one that died of natural death. Yeah. The rest of them were martyred or murdered. Mm. Which ought to tell us something. Mm. That the people who follow Jesus are not wanted here. And if you're one of them, guess what? The world don't want you either. And that's why God put us here. To show his love, his forgiveness, and his purpose for salvation. So the apostles are not with us. Those were gifts that God gave to the church. Now watch this. The gifts that are with us now are the ones we overlook that don't even think they are gifts. He said he gave us evangelists and preachers and teachers. You know what? what? I mean, why the church can't see those people as gifts? And I, I understand that in a way. Because I, I, I was in, many years ago, I ain't gonna say, well, I would tell you, 65 years ago, more than 65 years ago, kind of 66 and 67 years ago, I was in Alaska in the military of the Air Force. And every night I would pray for my wife. And, and she, at that time, wasn't even my girlfriend. We had separated, I don't know what happened, but I, I would pray for my wife every night that God would protect her, that God would take care of her. You know, you know, that's what I prayed. And, and, and over the time, a couple of years later, I got married to her. And the point of it is, I was married a long time before I realized that she was a gift that God gave me. We do the same thing with prophets, you know, with teachers and preachers and evangelists. We don't even realize the gift that God has given. So, evangelists, that's the guy who a preacher. He's, he's a preacher, but he specializes in salvation messages to small people and thousands of people, like, like Billy Graham, for example, and many others. They're evangelists. They have a purpose in the body of Christ. They are gifts to the church. But then there's so are preachers. And a preacher, I, this is where our problem is. We, we really don't understand what the role of a preacher is. It's to proclaim the word of God. Oh, Mm. He is a teacher. Yes. He's a spiritual counselor. Mm. He's a teacher of the Bible, which tells you you better know it. Yeah. So what happens is we, we don't look at preachers and evangelists as gifts. Mm. And it might be a reason. And it is a reason. Because when you look at the world and you look at TV and you hear some of these guys talk about uh, prosperity and ministries and God don't want you sick and God wants you to be rich and he will bless you if you do this. And if you're sick, you're sick because you don't have faith. <laughs> you can see why. People begin to look at preachers as if they're really not gifts from God. For example, anybody remember uh, uh, Jim Jones, oh, yeah. he was a preacher, yeah. but he wasn't no gift from God. Yeah. You, you heard the correct he, he was a preacher, mm -hmm. but he wasn't no preacher from God. They killed people. Mm -hmm. They were preachers from Satan. Mm -hmm. So our problem is, how do we identify as authentic yeah. the gift that God gives us? But guess what? Yeah. Satan has a slick tongue. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't think he has, yeah. talk to you. Yeah. 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 Are people who God pulled aside mm -hmm. to build the body of Christ. 
Yes. 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 They are. They're with us now. It didn't say that he gave the church CEOs. It didn't say that he gave the church managers. It didn't say that he gave the church uh, rulers. He gave the church teachers Amen. and counselors. You got it. 
It, it says that, that, that a bishop should be the husband of one wife. He should be vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given the hospitality. Here it is. Act to teach. You see, pastors, that is not a title. It's an office and a position in the church that needs to be fulfilled. And the job is to teach. To teach. I'm gonna go, okay. It also says that this guy, or who God gives as a gift, how do you recognize him? He won't be given too much wine. He won't be a person to beat up or strike people. He won't be greedy. He won't ask for money. He won't he'll be patient. He won't be a brawler or a fighter. He won't be a person who envies other people. And it be a man who rules his own house well. Because he says, how do you expect a man to God rule God's people or to, you know, take care of God's people if he can't take care of his own house? Amen. So how do you recognize the gift that God's given as legitimate gifts? You look at the character of the person who comes as a you look at the character. That's part of it. The other thing you look at is what he teaches. Because you can teach. They do it today. They talk about critical race theory. It's a lie. But they teach it. And what happens when you teach a lie? People believe the lie. Yeah. Yeah. So, a preacher that comes from God Jesus God's word. Amen. You know, that's simple, right? They call it doctrine. The doctrine. The doctrine that is taught, or should be taught, Christian doctrine. What does that mean? The teachings of Jesus Christ himself. And let me say this, and I don't know if I've been talking too long or not. My wife told me not to talk to you. <laughs> but, uh, you didn't ever say Jesus come talking in tongues, have you? No. Come on now. Yeah. No. Well, some, some of them did. But tongues was okay. a sign. Yeah. But guess what? That's how I got to talk to people who had spirits that were dead. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I'm talking about. God called me. Moses is uh, just like us. He, he's, a, he's a man whose spirit is dead. What do you mean? Well, everybody born after Adam and Eve has spirits that are dead to God. And that means that on your own, you will never see him because you won't hear him. You'll never see him because you're not looking for him. You know, in other words, you don't know anything about God and can't know anything about God because you're dead to God. Yeah. Well, how did God show Moses who he was? It was through words, a burning bush. And then he told Moses, what did you go tell these people? Right? Moses said, well, they ain't gonna believe me. <laughs> who am I gonna tell them? He said, what's that guy you had to the snap, drop it. He became a snake. A sign! Mm -hmm. He picks it up. Comes around again. A sign is required for people who are dead to God. Tongues was a sign. But guess what? If God is in you and me, then our spirits are not dead. Because the Spirit quickened us. Yes. And we now are alive to God. We don't need signs. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. A teacher 
will help us to understand those things. Yeah. You will know who he is. Yeah. You can identify the one that comes from him by the quality of his life and the things he teaches. So, if we go back to Ephesians, we will tell us again that he has appointed some to be prophets, some to be prophets, some to be apostles, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. And why? It's to perfect the saints for the work of ministry. Now, what you say, well, what is the work of ministry? You know, I ain't no preacher. What am I to do? Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Worship is service to God. You don't do it on Sunday. You do it every day. Amen. Amen. You got a job. <laughs> However, you work on a job, Amen. can glorify God Amen. or shame them. Amen. Right? Amen. However, you raise your children, can glorify God with his service or shame them. Amen. But what's the shame? The shame is I belong to him, but I don't look like him, and I don't do what he asked me to do. How do you minister to God? By ministering to others. Amen. That's the ministry of the church. We don't come together to pat each other on the back. Amen. We come together to encourage one another, Amen. to teach one another, yes. to love one another. That we can do that to those out there that don't know Jesus. And since they don't know Jesus, they don't care much about you. The ministry is self-sacrifice and service to God. And the way it's developed, and the way it's put into practice, and the way it's realized is through the leadership today, living leadership of evangelists, pastors, and teachers. When was the last time you thank God for a teacher? You probably have. I mean, a Bible teacher. You yeah, probably have. When was, when was the last time you thank God for a pastor? Well, I don't know if you have or not, but if you did, you might be ripped that you did. The point is, we have to look at what God's design for our lives is. Right? And it is to teach His. You. His plan, his power that is in us, how great it is. We have to know who we are, and the only way we can know who we are is when we understand who he is. Now, I'm, when I say thank God for preachers, I thank God for me, because I fail a lot. What I'm saying is, we need to learn. To thank God for the gift. Amen. For the gift. Amen. 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 I hope I wasn't too long.
being a nobody. Yes. Trying to tell anybody. Yes. About somebody. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Amen. That's what I got from that prayer that we're nobody. Yes. Trying to tell anybody mm. about somebody. Mm. And his name is Jesus. Amen. I, I want to ask the question. This is probably the most important decision that we'll make in our life. Have you had anybody out there? I've got a lot of church, the, the body is here, and I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm more than confident that you accepted Christ. But is there anybody here that have not accepted Christ? In other words, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Because that's the only way to do it. God, the Bible lets us know when we accept Christ, it says we receive the gift, and that gift is the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody here? In other words, I'm talking fast, but this is, I just love sharing Christ. But if you was to die today, and you stood before God, and he said, why should I be children my kingdom? What would you tell him? Mm. Are you able to say that I've accepted Christ? That I'm sealed, I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible says one day it's going to be an Christ, and he's going to give a mark. It's called a mark of Jesus. But have you been sealed with the Holy Spirit? And that's my question to anyone that's not sure when they are spent eternity. I can't save you. Even Pastor Oliver can't save you. We just want to introduce you to the Savior. His name is Jesus. So if there's anyone, you ain't got to get up to raise your hand because we can pray for you and with you that you accept Christ. Well, I guess everyone, it looks like everyone here has accepted Christ. This invitation is always to give Yours to receive. May God bless you and keep you in His word. Amen.